And we are back. January is National Thyroid Awareness Month, which aims to bring the public's attention to take care of the need of the important gland in the neck. An estimated 20 million Americans have some form of thyroid disease, with being more likely to develop more thyroid problems. And joining us now to tell us more details about thyroid disease is endocrinologist at Columbia University Thyroid Center, Dr. Hesu Loeb. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So as we talk about Thyroid Disease Awareness Month, some people hear about it, really don't know exactly where's the thyroid, what goes on with the thyroid. Very important. So what is the thyroid gland? Right. The thyroid is a butterfly-shaped small gland, and it sits in the middle of your neck. Um, it's located between the collarbone and the Adam's apple, roughly. Um, and its job is to make thyroid hormone. And this hormone is very important for your body because it's the main metabolic hormone. And that means that it regulates your, the way you burn calories, um, the way you expend energy, so it's important for weight maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, but it also controls things like temperature regulation, your heart, your digestive tract how you um, handle fluid in your body. So um, it's very important that the, the thyroid hormone be in good balance in the body. Um, that's also important because thyroid dysfunction, especially low thyroid or hypothyroidism, is very common. And it's estimated that up to 10% of the U.S. population has some form of hypothyroidism. So really important to know the signs and symptoms. So when you do have a thyroid issue per se, whether it's high or low, mm -hmm. how does it affect the body? So many different ways. So if you think about the things that the thyroid regulates, the, the couple of things that I just mentioned. Um, so we'll talk about hypothyroidism because mm -hmm. it's the most common one. Um, think about all those things as slowing down a bit. So the body is sort of slowly running out of fuel. Um, the person may experience fatigue, um, sort of mental fogginess, uh, feel cold. Um, there may be some weight gain involved because the body's not burning calories correctly. Um, there can be constipation because the gut is slowing down. Um, people may feel puffy and swollen. Women may have heavy periods. So a whole variety of symptoms that um, really can make someone feel quite unwell. Yeah. Mm. And I know one of the things we have to do is we have to check our neck. Yes. So, so that's very important. So the um, one way to check the thyroid function is a blood test that will tell us whether your thyroid is functioning normally, whether it's hyper or hypothyroid. But the neck check is something I definitely wanted to bring up because the physical exam of the thyroid can give you a clue as to whether you may have something going on with your thyroid. Yeah. So I would just want to demonstrate what that's all about. Go ahead, take it uh, <laughs> um, So the thyroid again, so I brought my model mm -hmm. of the thyroid. And so again, as you can see, it is a butterfly shape mm -hmm. and if you imagine that it's sitting right at the base of your neck mm -hmm. um, and so if you imagine that your thyroid is here the, the neck check is actually free it's a self-exam just the way you might need to do a self-exam of other things um, and all you need is yourself and a mirror and maybe a glass of water so that you can swallow a couple of times and you can you can follow actually the high, how the thyroid rises and falls naturally in the neck mm -hmm. so if you sort of look in your mirror and tip your head back just a little bit and you need to sort of imagine where the thyroid might be located. So your main neck muscles will form a V um, right at um, the top of your uh, collarbone and your thyroid will be located sort of within that V. So the first thing you want to know is to see if you have any extension of the thyroid or any swelling of the thyroid that extends beyond the V of those neck muscles, um, that's an important clue as to the possibility your thyroid might be a little bit swollen or maybe a little bit, in, uh, a little bit um, inflamed. The other thing to look for is take a swallow and you will see that your thyroid tissue will move up and then down. So don't mistake that for the Adam's apple because the thyroid is sort of beneath that area, but you'll see that naturally move up and down and then you're going to look for any bulge or um, any sort of abnormal or an, an asymmetry um, between the two sides. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do, that might be something to check out further. And so how does the thyroid disease actually impact the body? Right. So um, the impact can be twofold. One is the functionality of your thyroid. So if right. you're hypothyroid, um, mm -hmm. you could have those symptoms for sure, and that could make somebody feel poorly. Um, if you have hyperthyroidism, it's everything in the opposite, actually. So um, a person may have um, rapid weight loss despite a very high appetite. They may feel hot. They may have palpitations, shortness of breath. Um, people may have um, 
loss of periods or infertility. So there's a variety of things that a person may feel with, with, if they're hyper or hypothyroid. And we know women have a particular issue when it comes to thyroids as Very well. Very important. Speak to that. Um, so one of the main risk factors for thyroid disease or thyroid dysfunction um, is family history. So mm -hmm. if you know somebody in your family, your mom or your sister or a cousin, a grandmother, and I'm listing women in the family because women are about five times as likely to have thyroid dysfunction as men. Um, so that's definitely something to be um, aware of. Now, men are not off the hook because right. uh, men who have thyroid nodules, or remember I mentioned a bulge or a mm -hmm. lump on your thyroid, um, men tend to have a little bit of a higher rate of those nodules actually being thyroid cancer. Um, so everybody sort of does definitely need to be checked yeah, right. for the thyroid. And when you hear the word disease, of course, people always sometimes take a step back. Sometimes there's a little freak out moment. But honestly, when you talk about disease, disease can be treated. Talk about the treatments for thyroid disease. So thyroid disease is imminently treatable, um, and it's a hormonal issue um, where the thyroid is actually making not enough or making too much of the hormone. If the thyroid is underactive, we have very, very good um, thyroid hormone in the form of medication that a person can take, and it's quite a simple treatment, and it's very, very effective. Overactive thyroid, there's a variety of ways it can be treated. We usually cool things down um, by uh, medication, and then um, depending on how long-term the medication um, is set to go, we can continue that, or there are other more definitive treatments such as um, surgery if it's necessary, radioactive iodine ablation, um, and those are things that we think about down the line once a person's feeling a lot better. Yeah. Mm. About how often should a person be uh, checked out for this? Oh, good question. Um, so the thyroid blood test uh, should be checked definitely at any time a person has those symptoms that mm -hmm. I mentioned. Um, it is not always part of the routine panel when you go and get your physical exam every year, um, but if any of those symptoms exist, then certainly it's a very good discussion to have. Now, some of those symptoms that I mentioned, um, fatigue and weight gain and things like that, are quite um, general and nonspecific. Um, so just because someone has those doesn't mean you necessarily have a thyroid condition, mm -hmm. but um, the thyroid evaluation is certainly um, a good thing to rule out um, if anyone has those symptoms because it's so treatable. Yeah. Well, mm. Dr. Hesulo, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. My pleasure. It is definitely Thyroid Disease Awareness Month. We want to thank you for coming and sharing us and bringing us this awareness. Happy to be here. All righty. Now, listen, if you want to book an appointment, you can call 212-305-0078 or you can visit the website at columbiasurgery.org. We encourage you, please don't go anywhere because when we come back, we're going to learn about a spoken word focusing on the troubled state of American politics. That's coming up next, so stay tuned.